Hi everyone, Paul ISM. Welcome to part four of our Tamiya 120th McLaren MP4-5B video build. Um, we carry on from last time now. We did all the carbon fibre last time. Bit monotonous, but a job that was worth doing, I think. I think it looked good in the end. Today, we're going to build and paint all our engine. We're going to add some wiring uh, and hopefully get some of this put together. Maybe even get it on its wheels. We'll have to see where we get to at the end. So... Uh, without further ado, let's jump straight in and get on with the build. Hey everyone, please subscribe to the channel, click the bell notifications, get notified of our latest videos, give the video a thumbs up or a thumbs down, and leave a comment. I do read and appreciate every comment you guys and girls leave behind. I may not reply to them all, but they are all appreciated. And there's a link in the description of the video that takes you to a big long list of all handy videos and a lot of the products I use in my videos you now have the chance to support the video content creation by using patreon or the paypal me link in the description down below all the videos always remain free to watch this is just your chance to help support the videos okay so we're going to start today by priming our wheels now we're going to paint these mr 1500 black this is thin of level and thinner about what 60 70 percent through our 0.35 apex we're going to prime all these other parts as well they've all been cleaned up um, but we're going to leave the wheels in the mist service of black. Um, speaking to a few of the lads, that looks a decent colour. Some of the other parts, like the suspension arms, that we're going to leave in that as well. But obviously the brake discs, we need to paint in carbon and the uh, caliper colours, etc. So they'll be painted, masked up, etc. later on. We've also got the lower wing, which is also um, mist service of black. I did accidentally paint that white and decaled it with the Marlboro decals from my Evolution 6. And then realised the error of my ways. So that's been stripped and reprimed. And obviously we've got all the exhaust to do. All the engine components. I'm just going to prime everything up. So I'm not going to sit here and show you the whole priming process. Because hell, who wants to see this? But we're straight on to colour. Now I originally painted these intake um, stacks in polished uh, aluminium from AK Extreme. Later on with a bit of handling. But these being enamel, they do wear away. And we're going to fix that later on. Well, things like the radiators, we're going to paint up in it, and we use various colours on different things. Um, the exhaust, I'm going to paint in Mr. Hobby Super Metallic Titanium Silver, and then we're going to hit this with some sepia alclad and try and get quite a burnt effect on the exhaust. I've seen a few reference pictures of the car, and after some discussion with Luke, uh, we decided to leave these quite glossy, um, and that's what I've gone for. So... We're going to mix some LP colours, uh, Mr. Colour, uh, the exact colours I just showed there, and make a coppery colour, like so, and spray the drive shafts up. These will be masked later on, and we'll paint the rubber uh, gator at the end, and then we've got some zero paints, ceramic carbon uh, paint as well. Now, I'm on the fence about this. I always think the pigment's a little bit too big when I'm spraying it, but when, I'm dry, when it's dried and I look back, it tends to look okay, so... I'm on the fence to prefer this. I've mixed like Tamiya X10, uh, which is like gunmetal, and a black before, and that comes out quite well. But this does look good once it's done, so I think for now I'll continue using this. Plus the fact that somehow over the years I've acquired three bottles of it means I've got a lifetime supply as well. So as I say, these will be painted up. We'll mask them off. We need to spray the centre hub, mask off again, and spray the caliper as well. So a little bit of masking to do. Uh, with this paint, nice thin coat. It looks like I'm putting it on. I'm not really. Uh, there's not a lot actually hitting the model. Most of it's going past it. Overspray. Um, but we'll just go around and build it up. You will see metallic flakes land. And like I said, I always think it looks a bit too much. But once it dries, it does actually look quite good. Uh, with the other parts, these were primed in the surface of black. After thinking about it, I decided to paint it in LP5. We're going to have to speak to some of the lads. So LP5 semi-gloss black for these as well. All this through the apexes, uh, usually the 0.35, 18 psi, but for the metallics and the like, I go over 0.2, 18 psi. Just my personal preference for metallics. But quite a few parts to paint up in LP5 here. So just going around and painting them all up. Getting a couple of coats on each one. Because we're primed in black, the black base coat covers really easily. So there's no need for more than two coats in my opinion. And this part here, the oil filler cooler thingy, <laughs> I think it's the oil sump, isn't it? Because as I was told, this is a dry sump car. Um, we're going to paint this in semi-gloss, then mask it all up, paint it in gloss black, and it's going to look absolutely no different whatsoever. Same with the engine, I'm going to paint the main block in LP5. 
We'll mask it up and spray it in a different semi gloss colour. I don't mask it and I can't see any difference again at all. But it does look tonally different a little bit. So is it worth doing? Probably not. <laughs> but only you can decide that on things like this. Like I say, we painted these in copper. It's the next day now. These have been drying really uh, well overnight. We're going to mask up and spray the uh, rubber gaiters at the end of the drive shafts as well. So some careful masking with the Tamiya 6, 10 and 18 mil tapes. And with the engine, like I say, some pretty hectic masking here, quite in depth and yeah, very little to show for it at the end. But hey, at least we tried. I should have gone with a completely different black color. Um, I think I painted the main engine section in LP5 and I used TS29, which is the rattle can color. So there's a little bit of difference, but not enough really to notice it. Brakes, we're going to spray the center hub. So I've used my circle cutter to make a circle, cut off the end. That's made our template. And then we're going to mask up our steering wheel as well and then set to spraying. So like I said, we've got some Tamiya. Uh, this is L, sorry, TS29, I believe it is. Um, so that's semi-gloss black from Tamiya. It's a little bit different to the LP. You can see the difference when you really look. Uh, but in hindsight, it probably wasn't that different to look. Now the exhaust we painted in must be super metallic titanium. I'm not going to go over with uh, the hot metal sepia from Alclad. I've used this before. It does give a nice effect. And it does look just like the real car's exhaust. Now, it does leave a quite a glossy finish. And I spoke to Luke, who this is for. I built this for Luke. Um, and we both agreed that it probably looked better a little bit shinier than dull. Uh, I think it would catch your eye a little bit more. So we opted to leave it like this. I was going to dull coat it if needed. Uh, but I've just put a few coats down. I put it down. We do darken it up a touch. I'm just checking they're both about right. Uh, but we are going to darken up a little touch to this. As you can see there. We'll also have some smoke effect to it and add a little bit of blue heat staining, which is unbelievably subtle. So much so you can barely see it. Now, center of the disc, I'm going to spray in Tamiya LP uh, 48 Sparkle and Silver. Now, I was quite pleasantly surprised how shiny this is. This was just the kind of paint I was looking for. Uh, really nice high shine. So we did all four of the hubs with that. Steering wheel, we've done with the uh, Zero Paints textured black. Again, we get a coat down, light coat down. Then we bring the airbrush away, away and then there we go, as you can see, and start spreading for a bit of a distance and I find you get a nice textured effect there. So we've got some Tamiya, sorry, <laughs> Alkyl had transparent black. And it's got a little bit of staining to the top of the exhaust on the manifold. And then I'm going to add a little bit of blue heat staining um, to the point on a lot of the pictures where it does taint to heat stain, which is just there at that little section where the manifold goes into one. And then we're going to dust over it with some of the sepia again to blend it all back in together because it was a little bit too stark altogether. So a couple of hours later, we could unmask everything just to see how we went on. We've also painted our caliper as well in a titanium gold color, which is what it calls out for. Um, and overall, pretty good masking. Did a pretty good job here. Very minimal bleed through. Anything that there is, we can cover with a wash. So that's no real problem whatsoever. So careful masking, taking that little bit of extra time. Always worth it, even though masking is this tricky to take off. Um, we'll get there in the end. Give me a second. There we go. There's the last piece off. And there we go. That's looking really good. Very happy with that. On top of the engine, we have put the photo etch part on. I thought I caught this on camera, I obviously didn't. So what we've done is we painted it in, um, if I remember right, it was Mr. Surfacer and I got a sander, UMP sander, and just ran it over the top to get the shine back and then we super glued it on the top. That's it, that's all we've done really. Um, now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna drill all the um, HT leads for the coil pack. So we're gonna drill all these in on a slight angle. It's not the best position to put them in, where it's what's going to work for us. So just a little bit of gentle drilling. It goes right through and underneath, which is perfect. And we can move on to the next section. So I did, obviously, there's no real detail upset per se, other than the photo etch set we've got that we could lay our hands on in time to do this build. So I've added a few, um, well, we do scratch build something later, not intentionally, but I thought would I try and add a little bit more detail. So I thought I'll wire up the engine, get the core packs wired up, We'll try and do the ECUs a little bit later on. Uh, and just try and add a bit of visual interest. Try and add a bit of braided hose in and what have you. And just try and make it look a little bit more interesting. So like I say, we're going to drill out all five of these each side. And then I found some nice thin black wire. 
and that will do is absolutely perfect. So it's going to drill out a quick test fit. Let's have a look. And you see my hands are covered in paint. Been a very busy day modeling here. Pop it in, make sure it goes through. It goes right through and underneath. Like so. And I'm going to grab a clean cocktail stick, a little bit of our light tight glue. I'm going to put it underneath. It's probably the easiest, cleanest way to do it. Pop it in, let it sit, let it settle, hit it with some super glue kicker, and job done. That's that done. We can then cut off any excess from underneath and cut the wire to length. And there we go. There's nearly all of them done. Just going to run them all down the edge, run them all together as per the instructions, and then they will just run down the back of the engine to a point where they can't be seen. So quite simple to do. Uh, the Loctite glue is my craft pen, precision pen. They're always used. Nice stick super glue. Really gets a good purchase on parts. And the kicker is the Deluxe Materials kicker, which works absolutely fabulous. On a micro brush, very easy to apply. And you can find links to all these in my description of my list of products I use. And like I say, once we pop it through, we bend it back on itself, let it follow the lead of all the other wires, and then we can trim it and move on to the next one. A couple of dabs of CA glue on top will hold the cover on. I'm just checking the run of the wires. So we're just going to run it down there, like so. Make sure everything fits where I want it. It's perfect. So we will repeat the other side and finish that off as well. Onto the front suspension now. We've got a few components to do. And as I said before, I've never built one of these kits before, so this is all completely new to me. Uh, absolutely completely alien build. So kind of going on things. No glue involved here at all. All this is friction fitted, which goes against everything my brain was telling me to do. But it does all fit in together really well. Very conscious here damaging the carbon. So it took a long time doing this. So we've got the top and bottom layers of the suspension. There's two little arms that clip in underneath there and then push into two little holes on each side like so. It all pushes together, actually goes in really positively. Repeat that for the other side and then we can get our hub in place. Now these are really tricky. So it goes in top and then the top one you push down and it does hurt. Once I push it through, it actually does hurt your thumb. Repeat that for both sides and we can get our steering um, rack rod on, I suppose it's called, and get that in place. There we go. There we go. We've got working steering. There we are. That's done. Looking good. Another milestone done. We've got all suspension in place. Happy how it's looking. It looks like it's sitting right. It looks like it's all level and uh, looking the part. Now, we've got some photo etch for the radiators. Now, Tricky. These are very tricky. If you come to do these, you need to be very careful. Um, thankfully, I got away quite clean doing mine, and some acetone helped later on with clean up. It really, really did. So definitely take your time on this. So we popped in the grill at the back. So one go grill goes in from the other side, and we've held this in with the UV pen. We're just going to put a little blob of UV down the back and hold that. And on the front of the radiators, I'm um, a little bit out of shot here. A little bit of my footage there is out of shot. My camera's moved and I've not realised. And I only realised yesterday it had moved. So bear with me because especially when I'm zoomed in, I'm out of shot a little bit. So I do apologise, but obviously things like this happen. Don't forget, a lot of the time while I'm doing this, I'm live streaming as well. So my attention is often all over the place doing this. But it's just part and parcel of uh, what I do. So put a few spurring dabs of seagull around the edge. And we get this main piece on like so. And then on top, we put even more sparingly all around the edge. And there's a little grill that goes on. And then there's this last piece that goes on top, which is even more tricky to fit because you need the smallest amount of CA glue. Otherwise, you will see it. So this was tricky to do. And like I say, acetone saved the day. Not the Santador Mineral Spirits I picked up first, which while rubbing did absolutely nothing, then I realised it wasn't my acetone. But acetone on a pointed Tamiya cotton bud and some gentle rubbing will remove excess silicone, uh, silicon, CA glue, but be very careful. Don't put it anywhere near plastic. It will melt plastic and it will remove any paint as well. Once both sides of these were done, a little dab of CA glue in place. And then there's a very positive locating point. So push it on and glue it in place so it's held nice and secure. And then put a little dab of CA glue underneath. 
and let it sit. And both sides are done. And there's our radiators done. Add a wash. We've got Tamiya's panel line wash in black. And we're just going to add that in. It'll give you a little bit of depth. Now be careful. This can reactivate the CA glue. And you may find parts fall off. So don't go mad chucking it everywhere. Just put it where you need it. Let it dry. Come back in with a cotton bud with some Santador odorless mineral spirit. This is where we need it. And you can remove any excess. And just adds a bit of depth to the radiator. And just gives you a bit more of a natural look or being a sterile piece of plastic or metal. So very easy to do. It takes about half an hour to dry. And just come back and wipe off any excess. Now, wiring up the ECU. So I thought many different ways to do it. And I thought this is probably the best way. So I've got some appropriately sized heat shrink. And just test fit it to make sure it goes over the top, which it does perfectly, like so. I'm going to pop a little bit of CA glue on. There's lessons learned doing all the bikes over the years. The rubber hoses and what have you don't like to stay on of their own accord. So a little bit of CA glue, push that down. While the CA glue is still wet, we'll pop in a piece of wire. Like so, I forget what size wire this is now. I do apologize, I completely forgot. We pop it in, push it down so it goes down the side of the uh, heat shrink and into CA glue. Then we can repeat that three other times on all the ECU. Like so. Then we come back in with our super duper heat gun. And heat shrink all the cables and it will shrink and conform around not only the plastic but the wire as well. And it will hold it in. Just make it look like some sort of connector. Because that's exactly what the real cars look like. I've looked at them. And they do pretty much look like this. So a nice simple way of doing it. We've got one on each side of the side pods. And one behind the driver as well. So we'll do all three in the same manner. Some have got more connections than other. But there we go. There's all four on and in place. And we've got our heat gun. A little bit out of shot. You'll see it in a second. Like I said, the camera moved. I didn't quite realise where it was pointing. There we go. As you see, it shrinks and conforms. And makes it a quite a nice looking little cable connector, really. Does the job. This little heat gun is an absolute godsend. I put a link in my last video when we were doing the carbon decaling. It's just worked absolutely fabulous. And just does the trick really well. Okay, what we're going to do, we're going to get another tiny piece of heat shrink. And make like a little cable uh, tie kind of connector. Just pop it on, slide over the wires. We'll do four in total, two on each side. And again, hit it with the gun, heat shrink them, hold them in place. And now where the ECU is going to go, a couple of dabs of CA glue. Push it in place, hold it. Be very wary of CA glue on your fingers at this time. If you go dab on that carbon, it'll rip it right off. And then we're going to position the wires. Get them where we want them, and then again, we'll put a dab of CA glue under the bottom, very small, and get them held in place, like so. So the front one's in, back one just needs a smallest little dab, push it down, hold it for a second, and there we go. Held in place, got a little cable connector, like a cable conduit pipe holder, I don't know what you call it to be honest. And then there we are, held in place. And we should repeat that for the others and we'll just fold them down the back and cut them to size. This is the other side done now as well. Just lying down those cables where we want them. A little dab of CA glue on the heat shrink. Doesn't need a lot at all. And just be very positive putting it down. Don't be Move it around everywhere, just get it down, hold it, let the CA glue grab it, and that's the job done. And then down the back, we can glue it into the side. Watch the carbon, don't glue it to the carbon, and then using our wire cutters, we'll just snip it flush with the bottom of the monocoque. And there we go, there's our ECUs wired up, they're looking rather good. Nice bit of detail added. And the same for the one on top of the driver, there's one over the top, just behind. In front of the engine. Um, and we're going to do exactly the same. Just four pieces of heat shrink. Four pieces of cable. Hit it with the uh, the gun. I really wish I'd seen this. And took my camera out a little bit. Rather than being zoomed in. There we go. I 
And there we are. So that's that one done as well. And then with it bent, I've already test fitted it and bent the cables accordingly. You just test fit it, make sure it fits. There we go. I might have even glued that in place actually. And there we go. Right. So obviously we've wired up the engine. There is a breather hose, or it looks like a breather hose off the top of the oil sump tank on top of the rear of the engine. So I'm going to add that with a very short piece of uh, pipe, rubber pipe, and put a little bit of wire in there to stiffen it up. And then we're going to add the braided hose as well, which runs down and underneath the engine. And there we go. We're going to drill into the side. Like so, Tamiya pin vise and my drills that are listed in my products list on all the description. Drill in a hole at the bottom and the top of the appropriate size. And then we're going to get a resin hose connector. Like so, we're going to pop it over this piece of braided hose. Now, I completely forget the size of this. And I do apologize, but it's the size that you can see here. <laughs> you can kind of gauge it by eye. I don't have these in packets, so. The size has been long forgotten a long time ago. So, yeah, we just pop in the hose piece in the middle of the braided hose and then bring up the heat shrink like so. And we hit that with a gun. That will shrink it and hold everything together, hopefully. And then with some Tamiya LP Clear Blue. I would have liked to have painted it silver first. I completely forgot before I did this and I thought, uh oh, but with enough coverage, I did add it and it's fine. So, no problem at all. So a little tiny piece of uh, rubber hose with some of the cable we used before. Put a little bit of dab of CA glue and push it back over itself. Like so. So just got a little bit of cable sticking out. We're going to have to trim this a couple of times to get it right. Once you're happy, cut the size. And then we're going to test fit it. So we put it in the back of the engine and then curve it round onto the sump itself and just push it in place. And then the exhaust, as you see, we've got the braided hose underneath. Now, I did make a mistake here. I've glued the cool, uh, sump on the top, the dry sump, um, and I should have put the suspension components in first, but I completely forgot, so I have to take that back off later. It's a little bit of a problem. While looking at some pictures of the engine, I saw some Lamber sensors on the exhaust, so I've added those as well. These are intakes um, that we painted earlier. We're going to put a couple of dabs of CA glue and pop these in. Now, these look all right at this point, but with some handling, because it's enamel paint, it wears away. It's the main reason I stopped using AK Extreme, so we will touch it back up. But this piece can be glued in place just now anyway. But literally doing that, pushing it down, does take some of the shine off it. So the front section, we've added some magnets underneath. I think I did that a while back. Um, and we've put some strips uh, on the inside of the nose cone. I'm just test fitting it to make sure it holds it. These are very strong magnets. I use some PE, steel PE, off the actual set out the kit. Well, we've got extra for the kit. Um, and put it in until it grabbed. So here we go. As you can see, I lift it up underneath. Again, be careful to see it go on your fingers. You see we've already got one magnet in. We're going to put another one in. And eventually we do have three because it's quite a tricky piece to hold and to get it to sit right. And it's got a habit of moving. It likes to move forward like so. But if you get it just right, it will hold itself perfectly. And I'm happy. Now, because we cut this, it kind of doesn't line up properly, but it doesn't matter because Luke's going to be keeping off the uh, main body cover anyway. So that's not an issue. The only time you'll see it with me is when we try and get a picture at the end. But with those radiator grills we've added, it is quite a tight fit. So we need to be very, very careful when we test it. Engine, we painted and cleared those rear parts at the back, which luckily somebody reminded me about in the comments at the beginning of the build. We've read them through the suspension, added a dab of Eagle where they go. We're going to pop it in place. Engine's glued in place. These two parts are glued in place. And that way we can crack on with the rest of the suspension and the drive shafts and what have you. So drive shafts in, a couple of dabs of CA glue, and they're good to go. Wipe off any excess while you can. Then this top section was a little bit tricky to fit. This was the piece I rushed and didn't put in 
before we put the sump on the top. What she then goes in quite firmly, then we can get the rear hubs in place like so. So the bottom hooks under, and then the drive shaft goes into a little hole in the back of it. And again, you've got to push down on the top. And to me, this does hurt like hell once it goes through. And obviously, because we have to take this off, we've got to put the braided hose back and our little rubber hoses as well. Bit of a shame we have to take them off. But obviously, we've not built these before. I'm not totally 100% on board with the uh, the build process. So, yeah, it's just the way it is. You have to do things slightly differently. I'm just going to glue it in place with another dab of say glue. It's looking good. The heat shield's looking good underneath. You can see the reflection of the exhaust. Happy with the cooler exhaust. Happy with the scratch building on the engine as well. It's looking good. So a little bit of uh, braided hose, rubber hose, and wiring for the engine. And like I say, because we took the sheen off this, I've hit it with my Molotow pen. Now, if you do happen to handle it again, it's not the end of the world. You can go with the pen again. But I just want to see what it looked like. I knew there was a possibility I might get a finger on it later on. But it looked perfect. This was probably the colour I would have gone for in the first place. So we just go around it gently, very carefully. And there we go. Happy with that. Much better look. And we just do the centres as well. Molotow pens are fantastic. The only downside is they take forever to dry if they ever do fully dry. So a little bit problematic at times, but worth it. Now the seat belts. <laughs> Luke went out of his way and bought a 20th scale model factory hero belt set. Instructions are absolutely dire. The instructions are that. That piece of paper there you can see is the instructions. We've got a piece of two pieces of PE. Some stickers of the manufacturer's uh, belts and some uh, white metal buckles as well. So I stared at this for a good hour or so, wondering what the hell I'm supposed to do. Tried to fit it together using their main buckles. It had none of it. So I had to use my own center buckles at my Studio 27 set. So this is a butcher of Model Factory Hero and Studio 27. Now, I'm not going to sit here because this video is already long enough and build the whole belt. I've built these before. You've seen them before. Um, so I'm not going to go through the whole process. I have videos on them on my Subaru build, uh, but the build now, I'm just going to add the Boss logos. These are self-adhesive. I'm on the fence whether I like these. I prefer the decals. I'm not sure. I think I'd build like this where they're highly visible. Um, I think it looks better. So some double-sided tape on the carbon seat. As you can see, we've got all the other buckles in and the white metal uh, release as well. They're not looking bad at all. Now, we need to use some of the decals in the kit as well. We've got a Honda H for the steering wheel and the instrument panel for the instrument panel, funnily enough. So, with some UMP decal solutions, they're put on no problem at all. Little dab of glue in the middle of the instrument panel, and we'll get our steering wheel in as well. Make sure we get it nice and straight. Like so. And then a dab of glue on top where it sits. Like so, a little bit tricky. And then once it's in, just do a test fit for now. Make sure everything fits. Make sure nothing's foul in it and it looks absolutely perfect. Somehow, in the process of doing this, I dropped the cockpit on the floor. The base brake bias lever popped out and just vanished into thin air. So I decided to scratch build one. I've got some styrene rod. I've bent it. We've got a short section on a long section basically a little bit of ca uh you tamia extra thin cement glues it in place so lift it up get it all nice and straight like so it's not too far off the original part that's quite proud of this one and then we'll just put a little piece on top to attach it to the copy itself so push it down hit it with the extra thin you don't need a lot of extra thin at all and then we can trim that off with our cutters to the appropriate size. Like so, just grab it really quickly, the extra thin. If it moves, you can always move it around should you need to, like so. Then once we've got that piece glued in, we paint it the very end black and then we'll paint the shaft to uh, in silver. So some model color black and some uh, model uh, silver. It's simple, quite easy. And to be honest, it does look a million miles off the original part. It does look a bit different, but it's the best of a bad situation because I have absolutely no idea where that piece went. It dropped on the floor. I had Hannah in here looking everywhere. I've looked everywhere. Cannot find it. I'll probably find it in six months' time, stuck it underneath my chair, which I did look, by the way. 
So God only knows where it's gone. The carpet monster's had it and it's gone into oblivion. So just a quick dab of paint. Very simple. At least something's in there. Okay, if you look closely, you might think, what the hell is that? Looks like somebody's left a crutch in the car. But hey, glued in place, it doesn't look too bad at all. So with that done, we can now pop the cockpit in place. So quick test fit, just to make sure it all fits in right. Once we're happy, we'll put a streak of Loctite glue on the back. Hit it with our deluxe material kicker. Like so. Hold it in place and put a little dab down each side and do exactly the same. There we go. With that glued in place, we can then glue the monocoque on the floor pan. So quite a monumental part this. this. is the first time these two parts have been attached. Again, getting everything out of the way, we put some CA glue underneath the cockpit and on the back of where it sits. Now, it does go on very positively. It does click over the edge where we carbon these little bits as well. And just line it all up, make sure it's all fine. And then push the front in, clicks in place very positively. The sides click in really well. Now, to glue the back in, I did have to use a bit of a clamp just to uh, get it fully secured in place. As you can see, there's a gentle clamp, friction fitted over the top. Leave that for a couple of hours and that glues in place. But it's looking good, it's getting there slowly. Tires. So, kit tires, again, spoke to Luke with seam or without. Luke decided without, which I think looks better anyway. So we're going to get them out and clean them up, all four of them. We've got some screw slash bolts for the wheels as well. And then we've got our 240, 1200 sander. I'm just going to go around and sand and sand and sand until the seams go. Now the fronts are easier than the backs. The backs seem to be uh, a lot deeper seam, a lot bigger. It almost went into the tyre rather than sat on top. Uh, but with some perseverance and a bit of patience and a lot of mess on the bench, once you've gone round a couple of times, you'll see that that seam totally disappears. Like so. So perseverance on this one, it's well worth it. I also find at the end, if you hit it with the grey sponge as well, it just softens it a little bit. Uh, and then you can just wipe it off in a cloth, or for me, a t-shirt, and uh, get all the dust off. And uh, yeah, that's it. Simple. It's a bit monotonous. There are easier ways to do it. You could put it on a socket and spin it on a drill. You could use your Dremel with some sort of setup. But by the time you do this, for most of the time, I've sanded this off anyway. We've all four done. Now, Alan, Alan Parker did lend me a Goodyear mask, but it didn't quite fit the front very well. And it would have taken a lot of judgment by eye. I did a test one and it left a lot of, um, not overspray, but the mask didn't quite work as well. I thought, I'm not going to muck about with this. I know I can get these tyre reverse transfer decal thingies from Tamiya on quite easily and i know with a bit of testers dull coat they'll look as though they were painted on anyway so these are the reverse transfers which tamia really does not explain very well how to use i do have a dedicated video on the channel how to do these but it's really simple you cut them out you peel the back of paper off turn the decal around till it reads correct for you place it where you want it make sure it's straight exactly where you want it because there's no going back from this then get a moist cotton bud and again hold it and just dab the moist cotton bud you'll see it transfer the back of paper and you want the back of paper to go see through all around where the decal is and just keep tapping it tapping it add a bit more water should you need you don't want to make it absolutely soaking wet but you just want enough to soak through the paper so the decal becomes almost you know you can see it right through the paper once you've done that keep patting it down keep tapping it and tapping it until you're happy it's got pressed down. So what you're trying to do, you're trying to get this to release off the back of paper. So don't move the decal. Be very careful, very gentle. Just take your time, go around. You just need to keep pushing it down. And eventually you'll be able to grab the paper and carefully peel it off and you'll leave the transfer behind. That's the idea. No spurs in this kit, so no room for any error at all. Thankfully, we had no problems at all. They all went down absolutely perfect. I got them pretty much centralized as well. So when you're lifting this up, be very careful, very slow. If any of the letters lift, put the paper back down, give it a push down. But on this first one, it went absolutely perfect. Throw that paper away. Then we grab our cotton bud again, and we're going to push it down again and dry it off at the same time, like so. 
So the, once you've done these a couple of times, they're really easy to do. But Tammy doesn't really give any instructions in the instruction books, which isn't really great, which is why I made a video on doing them. Everyone does them and looks at them thinking, how the hell do you do these? And this is how you do it. It's simple, really. It isn't that difficult. Um, just take your time, line it up, and uh, you'll be just fine. Just be careful peeling back that paper. Make sure all the letters are fully depressed onto the surface. And once you're happy, dry it off and remove any excess residue. Like so. And just make sure it all looks good. We'll repeat that for the eagle one as well. As you can see there on that one I just moved. That one's completely complete. And obviously it's on both sides of the tyres as well. So quite a lot to do. Now you will be able to see where this decal has gone down. So I use some testers dual coat. I believe you can use other matte coats as well. I would just test some of the decals first before you commit to this. I've used these many times. And this is like magic. It really is. You go around it, brush it over lightly. And within seconds before your eyes it dries. And it just removes all the outline of the decal, makes it all look uniform on the rubber, and it literally makes them look painted on. It works really, really well, uh, which is why I knew not painting them would work out really great. There we go. Repeat that for all the four tyres. Now, I've gone a bit of numpty and lost the plastic spanner that comes with the kit for putting the wheel nuts on. Thankfully, I have these little mini nut drivers. I've put three of the wheels on. So I'm going to pop the last bolt in here. Now again, I chatted with Luke. Uh, Luke originally wanted the wheels off, but I don't think the brakes are good enough to show separately. I mean, it's up to Luke who wants to take these back off. Personally, I think it looks better with the wheels on, but that's a choice Luke can make for himself, obviously, later on, because he can still come off. It's not a problem at all. But I'm going to put them on for now, not only for safekeeping, but it keeps the chassis off the floor, and uh, we can see what it looks like. Not quite tight there on that one. So a little bit of a tweak. And there we go. Oh, just make sure to support the plastic. Don't just keep turning because you'll break all the components behind. So there we go. Finally set on its own wheels, which is a, another momentous occasion. And a quick look around. It's looking good. It's not looking bad at all. Um, I'm glad I added those detail parts. It does add to it a little bit. I did the braided hoses, the wiring, the ECU looms as well. Just adds a little bit to it. The seat belts don't look bad at all. Uh, carbon looks good. All the suspension looks good. And yeah, we're getting there now. One more part to do because we've got all the bodywork to finish off, build the spoiler, uh, polish all the bodywork. We've got to paint some parts black on the pods. We need to paint all the underneath of the uh, main body in black as well and get all our windscreen on and in place as well. So I'll be back very, very soon, probably in a day or two with the last part and we'll crack on. So that's not looking bad at all. Uh, it's fine on its wheels, which is fantastic to see. Very happy we got to that stage. It's looking all right. I'm happy with it so far. Nice, nice bit of scratch building, adding the wiring harnesses, adding some wiring, the braided hoses, and nice to get it to this stage because these are weird builds. Um, nothing like anything I've built before at all. Very strange. Like literally, almost everything's built and it all goes together. It's a, it's a weird way to do it. Do I like it? I don't know. I don't know if I do. I'm on the fence as to whether I'm enjoying this build or not. I don't know. I really am. I'm enjoying some aspects. I like the scratch build and I build the engine. But I'm not sure I'm a fan of the way they build up at all. I don't know. I really am. Well, no, by the end. Because the next part, part five, will be the last video. And as I say, we've not got that much to do. We've got the bodywork, polish up, rear, front, spoiler to fix, polish, mask and paint apart on the side pods, and then paint all underneath. Uh, the uh, main body part, um, yes. So hopefully I'll be with you in a couple of days. We'll get this thing finished and we can get it off to Luke and we can sort out where it's going for its final home. So yes, I'll be back hopefully in a couple of days, if that, and we will get this project finished. And uh, I'll let you know what I thought of the build along the way. I'll let you know. So we are. As always, if you'd like to support the channel, there's a Patreon me link, a PayPal me link, and a Buy Me a Coffee link in the description down below. As always, uh, check out SS Scale Model Facebook page and forum, umpretail.com. We get a lot of the products I use in my videos. Uh, we've got my Paul ISM modeling page where all my personal modeling work is shared. Live the bench page, offer hangout group, and the group build page as well. And of course, daily live streams over on my other channel, Paul ISM Live on the Bench. We're there every morning almost for a few hours. All the links to this in the description down below, as well as links to all the products I use in my videos. 
Uh, and of course, make sure you sub to the channel, click the bell notification, and click that thumbs up and leave a comment. Appreciate every single comment left on the videos. Read every single one. Appreciate all the positive thoughts you send my way. Even those that tell me my presentation's no good and I've got hands like pig's feet. Yes, I do get left messages like that. Beautiful. Um, if you got this far, let me know what was one of your oh, least enjoyable builds. We'll go least enjoyable today and next time we'll add a different question. Let me know what was your least enjoyable build. Maybe a different genre you tried or a different build or just a particular kit that wasn't very good. Let me know your thoughts on that. And uh, yes, there we are. So enjoy the rest of the day, everyone. I'll see you in a couple of days and we'll get this finished. So take care, everybody. Bye-bye.